Welcome to Will's Recaps, where today we delve into the compelling narrative of Rajev, a gripping Russian historical war film. This cinematic masterpiece intricately weaves the tale of the Soviet forces' valiant endeavor to reclaim the village of Ovsyanikovo from German occupation during World War II. As the harrowing battle for liberation unfolds, the stakes soar higher, with the looming threat of an impending German offensive and crucial reinforcements stalled by bureaucratic barriers. Join us as we embark on a journey through bravery, sacrifice, and the relentless pursuit of victory in the face of adversity. Without delay, let's immerse ourselves in this riveting narrative. Commander Evgeny Ilyich stresses the importance of keeping quiet so the soldiers can approach their target without making unnecessary sounds. When the right moment arrives, they start their attack using the trenches to reduce the number of casualties. Sadly, during the operation, many soldiers lose their lives. Some are badly injured by the advanced weapons of the enemy. A soldier attempts to pull a wounded friend to safety, but he himself gets severely injured, losing half of his body in an explosion. As they approach the enemy, some soldiers resort to using knives and engage in close combat. It turns into a brutal fight with blood everywhere. After the chaos settles, Machikin declares their luck in driving the Germans out of the village, even though they suffered heavy losses. As they secure the village of Ovsyanikovo, they understand there's no time for celebration. Positioned between Usovo and Panovo, both still under German control, they set their sights on capturing these areas. Sisoyev and Lavrov step in to replace the fallen officers. Lavrov is assigned to organize a shelter for the wounded soldiers, but unfortunately the decision backfires as the shelter is destroyed. Meanwhile, Sisoyev is given the task of establishing a defensive perimeter. Ilyich confides in Kostya Kartsev, admitting they've lost half of their men. Kartsev recalls Machikin's earlier remark about their lucky escape. Ilyich then asks Kartsev to take on the role of squad leader, but Kartsev hesitates, expressing a preference for being a messenger. They agree, and Kartsev starts in his new role. While on patrol, they observe that one of the soldiers, Zhurkin, is visibly distressed. When questioned about it, Zhurkin reveals that a German soldier was about to surrender. He surrendered with his hands up, but accidentally fell onto his own bayonet. Kartsev approaches the dead German soldier and removes the knife from his eye, finding some satisfaction in doing so. Kartsev mentions that Zhurkin used to be a barber and was cheerful during their training. They agree that he could use something to lift his spirits, like a drink or a cigarette, as he appears overwhelmed. Kartsev calls Barkov and asks to share his drink. Barkov reaches for his can and is surprised to find it empty. Upon closer inspection, he discovers a bullet lodged inside. What luck! That bullet could have killed him. He believes a priest must have prayed for him. They could have faced serious consequences for rushing into the attack without proper reconnaissance. Kartsev notices Viktor Somov, a 17-year-old who falsified his age to serve his country. Somov is assigned to clear out the dead Germans, but he's too frightened to start. To encourage him, Kartsev allows him to have a sip of the alcohol he obtained earlier. They soon discover that they are neighbors and begin to bond. This angers Sisoyev, who sees Somov neglecting his duty. Kartsev offers the schnapps to the soldiers with Sisoyev to smooth things over. Sisoyev intervenes, urging them to stay focused on their task. He reminds Kartsev that he's now in charge of the platoon. Kartsev counters, mentioning that he's the liaison to the commander. Political officer Efim Zorin approaches company commander Evgeny Ilyich, curious about why the Germans surrendered the village so easily. Ilyich speculates that they might have been overwhelmed, but warns that they could return for retaliation soon. The commander also expresses frustration, wishing they could have attacked both Usovo and Ovsyanikovo villages simultaneously. Zorin attempts to reassure Ilyich, but the commander points out that it's actually Zorin's right hand that's shaking uncontrollably. Zorin confesses that he's traumatized from witnessing the brutal deaths of soldiers. Ilyich then receives a call from the deputy battalion commander, who informs him that Ovsyanikovo has been liberated from the invaders. However, he also delivers the grim news that half of their men lost their lives in the battle. The captain reassures Ilyich that reinforcements are en route. Ilyich then requests that they send two anti-tank guns instead of machine guns. However, Lieutenant Colonel Larionov interjects, insisting that they take the machine guns instead as they'll be needed to seize control of the neighboring villages. Ilyich tries to explain the heavy losses they've suffered, but Larionov disregards his concerns and orders him to follow his command. With no other option, Ilyich complies. Later, 
Larionov receives the unfortunate news that the attack on Usovo didn't go as planned. In addition to the failed attack on Usovo, the Germans have also started firing at Ovsyanikovo. There's a real possibility that they could regain control of the village. A soldier asks if they can send for help, but Larionov explains that they're waiting for the 30th Army Battalion to arrive, though he's uncertain when they'll get there. For now, there's nothing else they can do. Larionov acknowledges that Ilyich and his men are in a precarious position. Meanwhile, Ilyich gathers the officers and informs them that they won't retreat. He reveals that no reinforcements are coming and they're on their own. They realize they need to support each other to survive. Suddenly, a surveillance plane flies overhead, sparking fear that it might drop bombs. Frantically, they search for cover. To their surprise, the plane releases pamphlets instead of bombs, offering safety to those who defect. It's a cunning tactic to sow discord among them, and it proves effective. Political officer Zorin immediately orders soldiers not to touch or read the pamphlets, recognizing the potential for them to manipulate soldiers who have endured great hardships. When Kartsev questions Zorin's order, Zorin asserts his authority, reminding Kartsev of his past as a boxer, and implying he's not afraid to use force if necessary. In the trenches, Vlasyuk and junior lieutenant Rykov, head of counterintelligence, make their way while dodging German attacks. Vlasyuk gets hit with a bullet in his arm, but manages to reach safety with Rykov's help. Later, Rykov meets with Ilyich and Zorin, instructing them to ensure every leaflet dropped by the Germans is retrieved. Ilyich is taken aback by this demand, considering their dire situation. He argues that he can't risk more lives by sending soldiers to collect pamphlets when they've already lost so many. This angers Rykov, who then threatens Ilyich. Rykov attempts to contact the battalion commander, but finds him unavailable. He then patrols to check if soldiers are hiding leaflets. When he confronts Kartsev and demands to search him, Kartsev refuses to comply. Rykov escalates the situation by pointing a gun at Kartsev, but Kartsev remains defiant. Tensions soar as Rykov threatens to shoot Kartsev. Ilyich pleads with Kartsev to obey the order and reluctantly Kartsev complies, challenging Rykov to shoot him if he must. Rykov walks away to inspect the other soldiers. Eventually one soldier is discovered hiding pamphlets. He claims he intended to use them for rolling tobacco, but his fate is sealed nonetheless. Ilyich pleads with the battalion commander to spare the life of the soldier who was caught, arguing that they need all their men and executing him would harm morale. The battalion commander agrees not to charge the soldier for now. However, when the lieutenant colonel learns of the situation, he's surprised the soldier hasn't been executed yet. Ilyich warns Rykov that he has 80 surviving soldiers who may react violently if they witness an execution. Despite this, Rykov proceeds to take the prisoner outside. As they leave the trench, German forces open fire. Vlasyuk becomes trapped in a trench while Rykov is wounded. The prisoner helps Rykov control the bleeding and shares a personal story about his family, including a touching moment with a pregnant goat and his four children. This angers Rykov, who believes the prisoner is trying to manipulate him. He threatens to shoot the prisoner if he tries to escape. Despite Rykov's threats, the prisoner stays with him and even forgives him. The battalion commander suggests sending soldiers and ammunition to Ovsyanikovo, but the lieutenant colonel rejects the idea, fearing it would lead to certain death. Back in Ovsyanikovo, Kartsev confronts Somov for informing on the prisoner earlier. Somov then shares a story about how he and his friend Oleg stopped Kartsev from robbing a wealthy man, revealing that Kartsev is a wanted criminal. Kartsev counters with his own version of events and points his gun at Somov, seeking permission to kill him. Ilyich intervenes as tensions rise, preventing any bloodshed. Meanwhile, Larionov learns that the Germans have attacked Ovsyanikovo. Despite being outnumbered, the Soviet forces fight bravely. Vlasyuk and junior lieutenant Rykov are captured by the German forces. Vlasyuk shows his pass, which he obtained from one of the pamphlets dropped by the plane, to avoid being executed. However, to spare his life, he's ordered to kill Rykov. Vlasyuk initially aims the gun at Rykov, but ultimately chooses to take his own life instead. As a result, Rykov is executed. Solmov returns to Ilyich after surviving an attack, and informs him that the Germans plan to use mortars to bury the trenches instead of launching a direct assault. Somov also reveals that he can speak German. Despite the imminent threat, Ilyich refuses to retreat and instead prepares his men. He orders some to stay and defend while others are to withdraw to safety. Some soldiers choose to remain behind. As the Germans intensify their attack, firing relentlessly, Ilyich and his men respond with close-range gunfire managing to take down several German soldiers. 
realizing that the soldiers he ordered to withdraw are safe, Ilyich decides to retreat along with the surviving members of the unit and report to Larionov. However, Larionov orders them to return and drive the Germans out of Ovsyanikovo once again. Ilyich refuses, recognizing that following this order would result in unnecessary casualties. In a private conversation, Larionov explains to Ilyich the importance of reclaiming Ovsyanikovo. Determined to catch the Germans off guard, Ilyich and his men devise a plan to make the enemy think they won't return, only to surprise them later with a full-scale attack using all available weapons. Fueled by their bravery and patriotism, Ilyich and his soldiers set out for Ovsyanikovo once again. The battles of Rurzev played a crucial role in shifting the momentum of the war, ultimately contributing to the defeat of the German forces at Stalingrad. By 1943, the Nazis were forced to retreat from their positions. Hope you liked their bravery. Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.